Okay, we're going to do some general information on the periodic table. So what I've done is I've just taken one right out of the back of a textbook here. So you can see all the colors nicely. And what I just want to show you, first of all, is the ones that are in green here, all on the left hand side. These things are called metals. Okay, so the green left hand side of the periodic table is uh, a metal. And most of the periodic tables got metals on it. And they're good conductors of heat and electricity. Right hand side, you've got these orange things here. These are non-metals, and they are poor conductors of heat and electricity. These purple ones right here, those are called metalloids, and they are sometimes metals, sometimes they're acting as non-metals. Blue ones on the side here, it's on the metals, or sorry, on the non-metal side, but the blue ones are specifically noble gases. They don't like to do anything at all. And this zigzag line is what's going to split metals and non-metals. So that zigzag line is going to split right-hand side to the left-hand side. You've got hydrogen right here. Hydrogen acts as both a metal when it's on this side, or you can slide it all the way over to here, and it's not there right now, but you could also put hydrogen here, and hydrogen can act as a non-metal also. Okay, so there is just your general uh, periodic table information. The vertical columns, so like my pencil is here, these are called groups or chemical families and specifically they have certain names those are the alkali earth metals these are the alkaline earth metals actually wait a second I think I said these are alkali metals alkaline earth metals slide all the way over to here noble gases halogens and chalcogens Okay, and these guys in the middle here sometimes are referred to as transition metals. Horizontally, these are referred to as rows. And you can see how there's numbers on the rows here. Maybe you can make them out, maybe you can't. This is row 5. You also have numbers along the, the top here. These are your column numbers and your row numbers. So if you wanted to use a grid pattern and say row 5, column 5, that would be this element right here. Or row 4, column 12, would be this element right there. Just another way of finding your elements. The periodic table, though, you can see is broken down into elements. We're actually going to look at one of the elements and write down all the information as it's shown. So I'm going to get rid of the textbook. And just throw it on a piece of paper here. Well, let's draw ourselves out one of the big squares. Usually, let's see, we'll go with oxygen. Okay, so usually you would have your atomic number, then you would have its name, I think. I'm not, it doesn't really matter. Oxygen. Chemical symbol is O. And then you look at, and then it has the atomic mass, 16.0. That's your atomic number. This is the name. O is your atomic symbol. This 16 is your atomic mass. Okay, the other information that you can gather from this thing is that, okay, well, if you have eight as your atomic number, that means that you have a proton count of eight. If you have eight protons, you also have eight electrons, eight, and your neutrons, if you wanted to find out your number of neutrons, you go atomic mass. Subtract atomic number. In this case, you would go 16 minus 8. So your neutron count is 8. That's about all the information that we can get off of this right now. That's just your general information for the periodic table.